Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. How are you today, Pastor? I'm okay. <laughs> well, it's Tuesday, beginning of the week. Seems like it's already Friday. Uh, today, Pastor, our, actually, I want to back up a little bit. I want to speak a little bit about your message on Sunday. It was, uh, I don't know, Pastor, and, and a lot of people I've spoken to afterwards since then, it was one of those messages that was so practically sound and so practically that we can apply practically, but yet sound in doctrine. It was one of those amazing messages that you were able to share your heart, talking about the broken vessel. And uh, never heard that illustration before of this lady, had Mary, could have poured it out. Instead, she broke it. And the illustration that you used and you applied it to your life and just opened up. And it was, if you guys haven't seen that, haven't watched it yet, go to our YouTube channel. And uh, and it was, uh, the message of it is, uh, Jesus says, leave her alone. She's I, done a good work She's for done me. a good work for me, yes. Mm -hmm. And that message, you guys, if you haven't seen it, you can actually go to our YouTube page or on Facebook. But Pastor, is one of those messages that was, it just hit home. And, uh, and really appreciated it. And, and I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of the guys from the men's ministry and, and just some of the people that my circle here are friends. It was That's a very small circle. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting smaller and smaller by the day. <laughs> it seemed to shrink. <laughs> but uh, even one gentleman going through a difficult time even came up to me and says, did Pastor, know what's go Pastor David know what's going on in my life? Because it was one of those things that just hit home. Oh. And uh, amazing. So thank you. And again, if you guys haven't seen it, you, you do have to check that out. Well, I'll be going to Calvary Chapel of Downey this upcoming Sunday. I'll be giving the same message. Maybe they can come and, and visit us while we're there. Yes. Why don't you come on visit, right? And uh, uh, come visit us. Now, we have somebody coming in to speak. This Sunday, we have someone coming in, but I'll be in Downey. And so if you guys so, want to go to Downey to hear the same message, instead of watching online, just go there for the Sunday. And you can go like, check it out. If like. uh, that's in, uh, actually, that's right off. Oh, I don't, don't even start that. It's on Firestone. Firestone. <laughs> but, Woodruff, uh, yeah. And Woodruff. And Woodruff. By uh, Downey High School. Actually, there's a good Mexican place right there. Anyway, you have a question? <laughs> I know. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. You know, we're, we're about to come up to our uh, general elections. And in the state of our country, uh, and, you know, the blame can go to the administration. It can go to a lot of different things. How important, Pastor, is it that Christians get out this year, upcoming year, to vote? I think that when you say the blame can go in a lot of places and a lot of things, I think the blame, because we're a democratic society, a republic, democratic society, uh, I, I would put the blame on the voter. I mean, we have so many voters who don't vote. So how important is it for, for those who are registered and can legally vote? How important it is, is it for them to do that? I'd say it's extremely important. And I believe that that our votes are representing our, our moral conscience. I believe that our our vote is saying, I approve of what you're doing, or I would like to see what you're claiming you can do. I'd like to see if you can do that. And we have a right to do that, thank God. It's a, a right that was um, granted to us and sustained by the blood of many who have laid their lives down to to continue our right to be able to participate in a, a society that is very quickly being taken from us and transformed into something I would believe is unrecognizable mm -hmm. to uh, those of us who have grown uh, grown older in this uh, society that we live in, in this beautiful state that at one time was, was the, uh, I think it was a shining star, California, that right. is now has been sullied by very poor government very, uh, very poor policies and all of that. So how important is it? I think that voting is exceptionally important because uh, we only get the, we only get the, uh, the government that we, we deserve. Mm. And in many ways, uh, believers, Bible-believing Christians have failed to exercise their, uh, their right to vote. And as a result, we've seen this nation go down the tubes and we've seen this this beautiful state being transformed into uh, 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 it looks like a country in some of the places that I've gone to in the world. California, in many ways, are beginning to look like some of the countries I've gone and, and ministered in, uh, like India and, and Mexico and, and in some places in the Philippines. And I've, I've had the opportunity to go to, to quite a number of, of places that uh, that aren't doing well, um, and 
California looks worse than some of those places right. I've been. India and other places like that where it's, it's very difficult for the population and it's very dirty and it's very filthy in many ways and, and all of that. And, and I, I believe that our government uh, that we have right now is so out of touch with the average voter that it's only it's only a matter of time that uh, that uh, even worse happens if we don't change some mm -hmm. things. Here. Well, you know, one of, the, one of the things I hear a lot is, well, I'm not going to even vote. It's not going to count or it's going to be uh, a scam or it's going to be, uh, I don't even know why to vote. You know, that, that type of mentality, then we're going to have, we're going to get what we didn't vote for. And so the importance of the Christian going out there, we were, you're looking up stats before that, and, and I could only imagine how many Christians did not vote, uh, and uh, and this is the result, mm -hmm. you know. And so the importance of going out there and voting our moral beliefs and biblically based beliefs is really other than the hope in Jesus Christ is only the hope that we have that we can stand up and. Vote. You know, we have a governor who just was trying to sign into law, make it an effort to to have uh, abortion even a moment before. Uh, birth. I mean, that, that's monstrous. We, we see politicians, John, who go on television telling us that they believe that, that a woman has a right to abort her child even, even after the baby has been born, should she, she decide for whatever reason that she doesn't want to keep that child. We're talking about infanticide. And as I mentioned to the church just recently, we, I have a, a granddaughter who was born a month early, and when she was born, nobody could hold her. Her mommy couldn't hold her. Her daddy couldn't hold her until she had uh, gone through a, a process there in the NIC unit. And and uh, how hard it was for, for my children to not be able to hold their newborn baby. But when you looked at her, when you looked at my olive, um, fully formed, fully formed. I mean, you're looking at a at a little chubby, beautiful little baby. And, and, and John, she was a month early. So... When that child has another month to fully develop, um, she's the baby's not going to look much different than that baby did at eight months. And so somebody going in and doing that procedure that is so barbaric, is so monstrous, uh, is it, it beggars the imagination. And I, I, I really think that many women who have gone through that procedure have been broken because of it and and thank God for his his grace and his ability to soothe and to heal mm -hmm. those broken hearts. I would not condemn a, a woman for making a choice like that because that's not my role to do. At the same time, I think that facts have been hidden from many uh, women from an early age where they have learned to use a different terminology instead of my baby, it's my, it's the fetus, mm -hmm. you know, and to dehumanize. I, I believe that that has been a demonic ploy to, to make the, the uh, destruction of, of infants um, something that is commonplace to the point where people are beginning to argue that it's their right. And, and, and the Democratic Party is, uh, is campaigning on that one issue when the majority of Americans do not believe what the Democratic Party is saying concerning that. And so it's time for the church to wake up. And, and even just uh, um, fair-minded uh, pagans, for that matter, fair-minded people, they have to be aware that what we, what we are dealing with right now is a slide into even more depravity. And we have to awaken. And the church has to, John. Um, I'm not a political preacher. You ask me a question that relates to it, I'll give you an answer. Uh, I don't preach, quote-unquote, politics as the answer. Of course, the answer is Christ. And I was mentioning just this last Sunday that when I got saved, we were going through very similar things. We were going mm -hmm. through climate change. And we're, we're going through uh, wars and we're marches, protests, you, you name it. And, uh, you know, I was part of the generation that actually transformed the nation that we at one time had into an evil nation. I was part of that generation that did that, where we, where they legitimized abortion and where, you know, which led to the the permission to smoke uh, legal marijuana and to take other kinds of uh, drugs and all that. That's part of the generation I was part of. I'm not proud of that, but I got saved out of that, John. And 
And it's my hope that God will continue to save mm -hmm. and draw people out of that lifestyle. And I believe part of what we can do to at least help this nation and help this state is for us to exercise our, our right to vote and to vote the, the, the people that are most closely aligned right. to, our, to our moral stance. I, I pray that the church wakes up to that. And this is our the ch opportunity for the church to really stand up and make a voice. We need to. And to have a voice in I all of I think we need to, but I think that we cannot replace uh, voting in a politician. We cannot replace that with proclaiming the gospel. Amen. When it comes down to it. Well, a politician can't change my life. He can't change it for eternity. He can change the things that, that, that affect my life, but he can't change me as a person. Only Christ can do that through Amen. the gospel. Amen. With that, church family, we do offer voter guides that you can pick up at the gazebo after services that closely align with our biblical beliefs and, and voting morally uh, through a biblical perspective. Uh, if, it's, if you're not here on Sunday and you've been watching online, you can come into the office at any time and pick up one of those voter guides. And it is. It's, it's really time for us to stand up and make a voice and to. and to stand up because we are definitely in the last days. And I like what you always say. Evil has removed its mask. Oh, yes. It's blatant to our children mm -hmm. uh, against babies, you know, and a whole other topic is, you know, this whole thing, my body, my choice. And you look at the hypocrisy of, but you must take the vaccine and versus now you can up to nine months or eight months term, you can abort a baby. It, all this stuff is just upside it's just down. hypocrisy. If you, if you utilize any kind of logic at all, you know, we talk about women's rights, women's rights, women's rights. Then we have a man saying, I'm a woman, and it just blows up in their face, and they, don't, they can't even admit that. Where you have a Supreme Court justice who can't define what a woman is. No, we're living in very perilous days, mm -hmm. and uh, we need the Lord. Amen. So you guys just want to take this time to share the importance of voting, uh, especially as Christians as we vote our moral beliefs. And Pastor, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to do invite you guys to come visit us on Wednesday, 7 p.m., uh, Pastor David's taking us through. we got to come find study. out. Right? Got to come find out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so excited. Uh, but come out now. You know, it, it seems God's continued to do a great work as, as uh, people are coming back. And it's just amazing to see how uh, the church is just seeming like it's in a place where it's coming back. Amen. And, and so I want to invite you guys to come out and join us. That's uh, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Pastor, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you and have a great rest of the week.